Want to know why we dial a number when we make a call? Or why we turn on a light? What does it mean to get your wires crossed? Did you know that the technologies that gave rise to these words and phrases have become outdated, but the language has not moved on? All this and more coming up. But before we continue, do like, follow, subscribe to The English Nut. If you already have, thanks a lot. Have you ever wondered why we talk about dialing a number when we make a call? Well, it's because the old telephones used to have a rotary dial. The word rotary describes something that rotates and that's what these dials did. The dial was a round disc with 10 holes along the inside of its perimeter corresponding to the numbers 0 to 9. If the phone number you wanted to dial started with say 8, you inserted the tip of your index finger into the hole corresponding to 8 and rotated the dial clockwise till your finger hit a little piece of metal called the finger stop. Then you let go and the dial rotated back to the starting position thanks to a spring action. After that, you dial the next digit of the phone number and so on. Yes, it was a bit slower than the speed dial on your smartphone. Rotary phones were introduced in the late 19th century and became ubiquitous. Their golden age lasted till the 1970s and 80s when they started getting replaced by push-button phones. Though you were now pressing buttons instead of rotating a dial, people continued to describe the process as dialing a number. And today when the world has shifted to smartphones with touchscreens, we still use the word dial. But if you decided to upgrade your language to the new technology, you would describe it as tapping a number. Imagine how weird it would sound if a present day remake of Alfred Hitchcock's 1954 classic Dial M for Murder were named Tap M for Murder. Have you noticed that on many phones there are letters displayed along with each number on the dial pad? Do you know why they're there? Well, originally the telephone numbers also contained a couple of letters that represented the telephone exchange your landline was linked to. These letters were retained even after the practice stopped. So in certain countries, they were utilized to create phone words to help people remember numbers. For example, a florist could select a toll-free number such as 1-800-555-FLOWERS. Basically, the number is 1-800-555-3569-377. But since F corresponds to 3, L to 5 and so on, you can write that part of the number as the word flowers. Nobody would ever forget the florist's number once they saw it. Of course, now that phone numbers of commercial establishments can instantly be found on the net and you don't need to remember a number once you store it in your smartphone, phone words are not so relevant anymore. Do you know why we hang up when we end a call? It's because the really old phones had a separate earpiece that you hung on a small U-shaped hook on the side of the device when you finished your call. The hook was connected to a switch inside the phone. Once you hung up the earpiece, it would weigh down the hook, disconnecting the call. Today, even though we merely tap the red phone icon on our touch screens to disconnect a call, we still refer to it as hanging up. When two people misunderstand each other because each person interprets the situation or conversation in a different way, you can say that they've got their wires crossed. The phrase originated in telephone or telegraph wires literally getting crossed, which led to you having a confusing conversation with the wrong person or getting a telegram that was not intended for you. Sometimes it would be quite funny with you getting a call from your husband making excuses for coming home late when the caller was not your partner but had erroneously got connected to your number. Or you could get a telegram intended for someone else informing you that your wife had delivered a baby. A shocker because you had been apart for a year. Let me give you examples of the figurative use of the phrase. Here's the first one. I gifted her a jeweled comb the very day she shaved her head. Clearly, we had got our wires crossed. Here's another example. The management and the union got their wires crossed over the settlement amount. You can also use the phrase to describe an individual who's confused about something with no second person involved in the situation. 
Ramesh got his wires crossed and showed up for the wedding today, though it's scheduled for next week. Or the chef got his wires crossed and put the wrong toppings on the pizza. Enough about phones, let's move to switches. We talk about turning the light on, but the little device we use to do so is a switch that you simply push or press into the on position with no turning involved. The first electric lights did not have such switches though. They had a key on the side of the socket which you turn to make the light come on. This was later replaced by a wall-mounted rotary switch which was an adaptation of the key. This too had to be turned to switch the light on. And though the technology has moved on from these types of keys and switches, we continue to turn the light on and off without actually turning anything. Do you know any other words or phrases that have outlived the technology they're based on? Do tell me in the comments below. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.